I have messages all the time saying, what do you eat in a day? Just, I think so many people really struggle with like, you know, food variety and I guess options, especially for protein. Okay guys, so I have just gotten back from a training session this morning at the gym. The purpose of today's video is really to show you guys what a normal day of contest prep eating looks like. I'm gonna try and uh, capture everything that I eat today. I've already made a boo-boo this morning because I was up at like 5.45, my alarm goes off to kind of get ready for training, being there by eight. I do a little bit of email and work and stuff in the morning. As I was working, clearly wasn't thinking that early in the morning and I forgot to vlog. So I have already had a couple of things every day. I'm on autopilot. So before I go to bed, I set the coffee machine for like six. So by the time I come out here, it's all brewed for me and I'll have probably two coffees. And I have been such a fan of um, adding in these little guys. So the brand is Quest and they have vanilla flavor or the salted caramel. And this is kind of what I've been using as my creamer, just because the macro ratio is so much better than creamer and it's still really like thick and like tasty. Just adding, I guess what I used to do, and I'm so glad I found these. I used to use like an unsweetened almond milk and I would have to put a bunch of sweeteners in there and it was just nasty. So to have something that's already flavored and creamy is really good. So I'll have like a hundred meals total over my two coffees with the creamer. And then also I was really hungry this morning, which it's kind of the first time I've woken up hungry, but there's a good reason why that is. And that is because this weekend we're traveling. So I'm going to be going out to Dallas on Friday. And I know that we've got two nights back to back with entertaining. We're going to be going to restaurants. I want to be able to have a wine or something like that. Last night, I got to the end of the day. Um, it was probably like nine o'clock before I had dinner. So <laughs> it's quite late and I already had a bunch of calories left over. And I was like, you know what? I've hit my protein. I might just roll those calories um, so that I've got a bit more flexibility on the weekend. So in a day when I woke up, I was like, oh, hunger is crazy. So first thing that I grabbed this morning just on autopilot as I was groggily drinking coffee was the Quaker chocolate flavored uh, rice cakes. These are the higher calorie ones. When I say high calorie, they're still ridiculously low. <laughs> Uh, they have just 12 grams of carbohydrate and one gram of protein and fat. So I just had one of those with some peanut butter powder uh, spread, which this has been a bit of a savior for contest prep. So they come in a couple of different flavors. I've got the original one, but they also come in a chocolate and a banana. So it's kind of like banana loaf or something. Banana bread's kind of what it tastes like. But again, this is significantly lower calorie than regular peanut butter. So the serving size is still 32 grams, which is the same as regular peanut butter, but it has two and a half grams of fat instead of 16. And it's higher in carbohydrate, but the calories are still nowhere near as high as a regular peanut butter. And don't know if you want to have a look in here, but it doesn't look very pretty, but uh, it's kind of the same consistency when you spread it. You can see that that is definitely not coming out of the jar. So it's better than not having any peanut butter. <laughs> so that's what I snacked on this morning. And I'm just about to have breakfast. It is 11. 15 and uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> so let's do it. What I'm gonna be having is uh, a bunch of veggies. So you guys have probably seen me put this on my store quite a bit because it truly gets me through the day. I wouldn't be surprised if I have about 500 grams of veggies in this first meal. So I'm just gonna go in and weigh out everything and show you what I've got here. So. We've got peppers, green onion. That's more peppers, we don't need that. <laughs> Shishito peppers. So these are kind of like, I've chopped them up really finely, but they're not very big and they kind of taste like a red baby bell pepper, but they look like a jalapeno. So they've got a nice little tang just some diversity. I hate eating the same thing all the time. Speaking of jalapeno peppers, got some kale. Don't really like kale unless it's like covered in salt. Like you know when you go to a restaurant and you have 
like kale and it's super like buttery and oily and salty. That's about the only way that I like it, but hey, it's still adding fiber, so that's how I like to eat it. And then I've got some tomatoes as well. So I'm gonna go and put a bunch of stuff in here. So I usually do about um, 200 grams of mixed zucchini and yellow squash and their macronutrient profile is pretty much the same. So if I get real lazy, I'll just log it as one or the other because it saves me time. Um, the differences is not that significant. So that's probably what's gonna happen today. I'll do 30 grams of kale. Kale's actually surprisingly high in carbohydrate compared to some of the other veggies. It's nothing like a like a starch, a bread grain or a cereal, obviously, um, but or a vegetable. I remember looking and going, oh, that's surprisingly high in carbs. So 30 grams of that. Um, I'll do 20 of the jalapenos. I really like a little bit of spice in my life, so why not? Same for the green onions. We'll do a 20 gram serve of that. Shishitos, we'll do 20 as well. And some baby bell peppers, I'll probably do 50. Literally just goes in the frying pan. If I wanted to be really pedantic about this, I would probably do the zucchini first since it's probably going to take a little bit longer to cook through, but I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I gotta get to the office. So I'm very much a rushed, rushed chef. Salt, like I said, I love salt. I probably use about three or four grams every meal and that was just for the veggies. I'll probably salt my eggs as well. So if I had to guess, I'd say my daily sodium intake is probably around 6,000 milligrams, maybe more, because just looking at what my general food logs are without adding in any salt, it's already sitting probably at like 3,500 or 4,000 milligrams beforehand. So I only can imagine what it would be like if I actually tracked it all. So as I get a little bit closer to getting on stage, um, so like, the last two weeks, I'll actually start to log all the sodium that I'm having because in the last peak week, my sodium intake needs to be very consistent, like pretty much every single day. We don't want large fluxes because it does change how you're looking um, just because of its um, ability to draw in water. So water will follow sodium. And whilst water is a good thing, it does help your muscle look really good if it's inside your muscle. If it's not inside your muscle, that's when you can start to have your, you just look a little bit soft and flat and I guess watery. So there is that. Just gonna add some black cracked pepper. Turn that down and then I can explain what I'm gonna do with my omelet. So I have about two or three different ways of, oh my God. Can't keep anything together. By the way, I gotta show you this, guys. No, I'm not flashing you, but so this happened. It like ripped my, my nail. Like I, these are all my nails under here. You can see that. This one is the only one that had a tip and it ripped my fingernail right back and it was bleeding so bad yesterday and it just catches on everything. <laughs> eh. Something else to think about. I guess a lot of people ask about oils and things, should you track that? I haven't, I never have. Technically, if I was to look at my food log in carbon, it would say I eat 50 grams of fat. I do use oil and I do use butter spray and a lot of things, but I'm pretty consistent with the amount. So I just know that my actual intake each day is probably a little bit higher. And you know, when push comes to shove, at the very end of prep, if I'm struggling to lose like, a, you know, the last little bit, I might take some of those things out. It's probably gonna contribute about hundred calories across the course of the day based on how many meals I have. So that might be enough to get me a little bit lower in calories, but right now it's not something that I track. But like I said, I try to be really pretty consistent with it. I think today, I wanna show you both, but I'm, I don't wanna eat both. So I've been doing a wrap uh, and I also do an English muffin. So I think I'll show you the wrap today. These are both pretty good products. This one especially is lower in carbohydrates. So these wraps are 16 grams of carbohydrate. They have 11 grams of soluble fiber, which is crazy. I love that. I don't have a lot of other soluble fiber in my diet just because my carbo carbohydrates are going to start 
come down. So I'll, that is the, usually the type of fiber that starts to suffer. I can do a really good job with keeping insoluble fiber in my diet because that's primarily our, you know, fruit and vegetable intake, but soluble, you know, is from your breads, your cereal products. And because they are more carbohydrate rich, they tend to be the ones that go first when I'm in fat loss. So something that I will probably have to start doing as I get to the end of prep is supplement with like a fiber powder that is a psyllium husk is what I use because it would be more soluble. Let's do this omelet. So I'm probably gonna do 150 mils. Perfection, guys. Been doing this way too long. <laughs> Again, add a bit of salt. Cool, I'll turn that right down. Okay, something that I am grateful for when I live here, uh, now that I live in America is the variety of fat-free or low-fat products. So <laughs> I've clearly got all of them. <laughs> uh, this particular cheese, it's not a high quality cheese if you're looking for like, got, look, I'm a, like a cheesy person. I would love to go and sit down and have a, like a nice charcuterie board or something, but they're just so dense. It's like for one ounce, you're getting like nine grams of fat not worth it so these are fat free sharp singles they're great if you're doing like a, a burger hamburger or a breakfast muffin or something like that so i'll probably use that today and then i also really like um the laughing cow creamy light cheese wheels so these are like a 16 gram serving and it's just a really nice cheese to spread and i also put it in my omelet so i'm going to go and do that now Gonna turn that off so it doesn't burn. It's kind of already cooked through a few little bits up. I'm being super lazy here. I wouldn't normally cut this on a chopping board. Get real fancy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flip that over and on a plate putting half of that on here and then I'm going to get a second cheese wheel just because I really like cheese <laughs> and then I'm going to spread that over cool so that will be part of my breakfast and let's come over here into the, the space so you can see this I'm naughty. I think I must go through like 10 pans in a two month period because <laughs> I'm using metal. <gasps> My bad. So it's partly done. We're almost there. And something that I've been using a lot of lately is the G Hughes Honey Mustard. I They have such a good range of like really low calorie um, dressings and dipping sauces. They all have garlic and onion in them. So as much as I used to use them, it was just not worth the sacrifice of me being six months pregnant. So this is the only one at the moment. I probably could go and find some others, but it doesn't have any garlic and onion. So it has one and a half grams of fat and one gram of carbs for a 30 gram serve. So I wouldn't normally be this pedantic with the dressings and prepping. So it kind of all adds up. So I usually just zero out. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> 22 grams. So, um, that's pretty much what I'm going to have for breakfast, guys. <laughs> so um, this will probably be about, I'll do the macros here for you in a second, but I think this is probably going to be close to about 40 grams of protein. Um, it'll probably be about 25 carb and easily under 7 grams of fat. So um, we'll see how close I am when I do the math. <laughs> I'm starving. I'm going to eat. <laughs> Okay guys, so I just realized I didn't put the beef that I normally have in there. So I usually use a 6% fat free ground beef and that would add probably 15 grams of protein. So it's actually, it's 31 grams of protein. I was a little shy on my estimates, but anyway, um, five grams of fat, which is great. Um, and it is, let me see, 43 grams of carbohydrate. I'm just making sure I've got everything 
entered in there correctly. Bell peppers, kale, zucchini, squash. So that 200 gram combo of zucchini and squash is about eight and a half grams of carbs, which is why you should track your veggies. Like they're not free. Um, and in this case, like if I take away the 15 from the wrap, like I'm still getting like 30 grams of carbohydrate just from vegetables. So do track your veggies because they ain't uh, calorie free. Yeah, that looks all pretty good. So 31 protein, 43 carbohydrate and five grams of fat and fiber for the day so far with this wrap, which was 11, um, is already at 17 and a half grams. So these are great. Um, they are really uh, good, I guess, for helping if you have started to diet and your calories are getting down a little low, you can really start to see some changes in your speed of digestion. So if that's a problem for you and you're feeling like you are not going very regularly, just a simple reintroduction of something like this, which is more soluble based, will probably um, really help you out. So that's it. That's my first meal. I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to go to the office. So you'll see me do some of my client updates today and then you'll also get to see, I guess, my food choices uh, and I guess the meal timing um, while I'm at work. Alrighty guys, uh, so <laughs> it's four o'clock and I still haven't had an opportunity to eat anything. So I'm a little bit hungry. Also probably a little bit naughty because I usually try and eat something, you know, every three hours. So my breakfast was 11 o'clock. So I have just had back-to-back -back clients this morning. Then I had an hour consultation. So I just didn't eat. So I'm gonna go get a snack. By the way, welcome to my office space. <laughs> Not a full house today, but a few people in the house. Okay, what do I wanna eat? Okay, so. This is going to be about 37 or so grams of protein, I think. And it's probably my favorite all time snack. So this is just plain Greek yogurt, but it is mixed in with a new product. And we are actually gonna be having something very similar soon. This is a good friend of mine, Zach's brand um, of powdered mix-ins. Um, so this is salted caramel flavor, which is delicious. And I'm going to have that with a little bit of extra sweetness. So the stevia and Reese's peanut butter chips and the peanut butter that I was sharing with you guys earlier this morning. And I'm going to put that on some rice cakes. So let's go and take it back to my desk and we'll show you what's in it. Don't mind my treadmill with a chair. <laughs> Ultimate lazy. <laughs> Normally I stand up, but you know, it's one of those days. <laughs> um, okay, macros. Let me grab my phone. I'll tell you what's in here. So this meal is going to have um, 175 grams of Greek yogurt, 15 grams of the powdered mix-in that I showed you, 15 grams of the peanut butter. I'll do a serving of the Reese's chips, which is about 15 grams, I think. Uh, and then I'll do two rice cakes. So this comes out to a 403 calorie snack, 38 grams of protein. God, I've got a good memory. 47 grams of carbohydrate and seven grams of fat. So yeah, this is super, super tasty. If you like sweets, but you're on a calorie budget, this is probably the way to go. Um, you could absolutely reduce or chop down those carbohydrates if you wanted by removing the amount of peanut butter. You're going to see it. I'm going to use quite a bit. And you probably don't also have to have chips on it. I don't do this every day, but I do still have a bit of flexibility right now with my macros. So why not? Oh, that's it. Don't you hate it when you break, bite, uh, open up a packet of um, rice cakes and they're all crumbly? Someone's been kicking this bag around the back shed. That's my bet. Okay, so peanut butter, let's turn that on. I'm betting this is probably about 15 grams. Oh God, I'm just nailing these numbers lately. <laughs> you ever go through a phase where you're just a magician with weighing things out, get nail it the first time. Okay, and 15 again, since I've given myself a serving. Bang on, awesome. So that's gonna be the base. Then we're gonna get super fancy and uh, tip in. Ooh, it's nice and thick. Put on some of this good stuff. Oh, 
a little bit more salted caramel goodness. I will lick that bowl later. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and then zero that out. Oh, what's the serving again? 15 grams. Oh, 16. No one knows about that. <laughs> we'll just plop these. So it's definitely food time. I've been listening to my stomach grumbling for the last hour phone consult. <laughs> so I'm probably going to have another meal a little bit closer than I would normally as far as like the time. In an ideal world, like I said earlier, I think you would want to spread out your protein intake. And that's just, again, if, if you're doing perfectly with your um, protein on a day-to-day -day basis, like you're doing a phenomenal job. But if you want to take it to the next level, um, thinking about like the, the protein refractory phenomenon, that is basically you are stimulating your MPS signaling. So that's your muscle protein synthesis when you eat a bolus amount of protein like this. It's, but once you maximally stimulate it by eating a good amount of protein, eating more within a short period of time doesn't like ramp it up even more. It's like you turn your car on, it's already on. So it takes about two to three hours for your blood leucine levels to actually fall back to kind of a baseline level. And that's when you want to hit it again with some more protein. So that would ensure that for the entire day, you're maximally signaling protein to, you know, muscle protein synthesis. But I made a boo-boo today. Probably not going to spread my meals out because that would mean that I'm going to bed at 12 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm doing my best. <laughs> Sorry, this is my snack. Uh, I think I have two more snacks that I packed for the office and I haven't even gotten down to it. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty juicy looking 38 grams of protein. Like I said, if you want to cut down those carbs, just omit the good part. <laughs> and also omit the other good part, which is this really low calorie uh, peanut butter, which is phenomenal. It's about 100 calories for a soda. Okay guys, so we're back. Uh, clearly I'm wearing different clothes and that is because it has taken three days consecutively to try and film this full day of eating. We have to say like meetings, check-ins. I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm too busy. So what I am actually showing you today is a pretty decent representation of what I actually would eat in a day, except you're seeing it at like each different meal over three different days. <laughs> So obviously my normal breakfast, you guys have seen me do my, um, I guess, wrap omelette veggies in the morning. Then you saw my snack, which was yesterday, which was the Reese's, the yogurt, some dairy in there, the rice cakes, that kind of thing. Then what I would normally go to next is something that I've kind of prepared from home, or sometimes I'll even use like a frozen meal. We use a awesome company, Icon Meals. Um, Wylane has been sponsored by Icon for several years now. So it's just really convenient as like a fill-in meal. If you've run out of time to meal prep, like you've got something there and they do have quite a variety of different macro-friendly options. But this week I was exceptionally prepared and wanted some more voluminous food. So um, I know I'm serving this to you in a blue package. It looks super delicious. I will present this in a bowl when I eat it, but this is like my famous bolognese. It's in um, all of my books. Actually, both of the books have got a different variation of this. So this is, oh, it even smells like spaghetti bolognese. So it's like an extra lean um, ground beef. And um, I actually make the sauce myself because I have IBS. Most um, like marinara sauces or bolognese sauces or like tomato basil, like, you know, when you're making spaghetti, like they have garlic and onion and not just a little bit, like a lot. So that does not sit well with me. So I kind of make it from scratch and I use like diced tomatoes, red peppers. I'll put zucchini and squash in there as well, just to kind of fill it out. And then I let it simmer and I use cracked pepper, salt, chili powder if I want a, like a bit of flair or jalapenos. And then I'll kind of puree it all up if I'm feeling lazy. If I'm feeling really good, I'll finely dice everything. But I've taken the lazy option this week and put it in the food processor. So I'm going to have this as kind of like my third meal. So you've seen a breakfast, snack. This is kind of my lunch, but usually it's like 4.30 in the afternoon, just based on my, like my, my normal meal timing. And the noodles that I've got here 
are by uh, a company called Miracle Noodles. So I know a lot of you are probably looking at these going, oh, I feel like I've had those once. Oh my God, they were awful. You know, you need to know how to prepare these because I've had that feedback a lot from people. But I can also say that when it comes to dieting and feeling like you're satiated, these are a fantastic option. So it's basically a Japanese root of a plant and it goes through a bunch of processing to make it into the shape of a noodle. So they have like rice, fettuccine, spaghetti, angel hair, like you can see there, capellini, angel hair, so a thin noodle. Typically I would wanna cook this in the pan. So when I'm making my bolognese, if I was doing it for home and cooking it fresh, I would do that. I'd be emptying out the uh, noodles, I'd be preparing them as per the instructions. So basically you wanna soak them in warm water and then let them drain. And then you want to fold it through like whatever sauce or meal you're preparing and it will, they will take on the flavor. So they're really good to replicate any pasta dishes. I have made my own macaroni and cheese using like different types of their pasta. Any Thai dish where you're using like noodles or Japanese food, they're awesome. So as long as you're using a nice flavor and a sauce, they're great. So that's my next meal. The macros for this are 37 grams of protein, 13.2 grams of carbohydrate, and that's literally just the vegetables that are in my food. And there's about four grams of carbohydrate or thereabouts just from the, the pasta noodles. And it has six grams of fat. And again, that comes from the extra lean ground beef. So I'll also probably put some cheese on here. So I'll use like a fat-free um, shredded like or grated cheese. That's going to add, that's part of the protein content. I guess it's like not adding an extra nine grams for a serving. And I know that I'm going to run out of time today to feel what I actually go and eat. So this is going to be my like pre-dinner snack, or it might even be my dessert, depending on what time I finish work. So you are looking here at some, probably my favorite cookies. They are amazing. So M&M cookies, they're just like super dense. <laughs> I just love them. So I'm going to have one of each today because I can. They fit my macros. So based on what you've seen so far, my totals are 116 grams of protein. I'm at 110 grams of carbs already uh, and I'm at 20 grams of fat. So I'm kind of sneaking up close to my carbohydrate target. So that's 172 at the moment. And my fats are 50. So I have some room to fit too. But um, here's what's going to happen. Once I put these into my macros, you're going to see that this particular snack comes out at like 22 grams of fat and 62 grams of carbohydrate, which is dense. But today I'm probably going to have that as my snack. I don't do this every day. And I can assure you that when my calories are starting to get below like 1500, right now they're at like 1750 something. That's okay. But there's going to become a point where I am so hungry that these types of foods are just not really satiating anymore. Like right now my hunger is all right. So I may alternate this like every other day and incorporate a treat or something like this, maybe some ice cream, like or whatever. But there'll become a point where I'm just like, it's not worth it to me. I would rather eat like seven more of these instead of these two tiny little cookies. So that's where we're at, guys. This is going to be the next couple of meals that I have, but it still leaves me with, I think about, what have we got here? I have to do some math because I'm adding multiple days together. Um, I still have 31 grams of protein left to hit my gram, my target of 150 protein. I have zero carbs left. This literally takes me to the end of my limit, but I still have eight grams of fat left over. So that's quite a small meal. If you do the math there, that's like just under 200 calories for my dinner. But that's also going to be like at nine o'clock. And I know I'm not going to be hungry like after having all of this still. So what I'm probably going to do is zero carbohydrates doesn't give you a lot of flexibility, does it? So I'll probably end up having like um, some kind of egg white or a lean protein sauce. I might even do some ahi tuna, like a I don't know whether you guys enjoy like Japanese food, but I love sashimi tuna. So I might do something like that. Um, and instead of having the eight grams of fats, I might use those 72 calories for like a little stir fry veggie or something. So I can trade out those 72 calories from fat to carb or whatever combination I want, as long as I don't exceed that number. So 
I will probably try and make a sneaky meal tonight and show you. It'll be off my phone, so I'm going to apologize now. But, you know, this is just kind of how I operate. You know, I sometimes I'll get to the end of the day and I've got a ton of calories left and I might have like a bigger meal. I might have like four tacos. It truly just depends. And I really like to try and be flexible because I have been very restrictive with my food choices in the past and I don't want to be there again. I don't want food rules. I don't want any restrictions. I don't want any no bad foods, good foods. That doesn't exist. Like everything has a calorie value. Every food has a micronutrient value. Uh, and I think it's really important to kind of, you know, eat in moderation. Like this isn't a bad food. There's nothing wrong with this. It provides me energy. This is going to fuel my training. It's not going to give me a whole bunch of micronutrients, but I'm getting that from, you know, the variety of other foods that I'm eating. And because I do eat quite flexibly, my food choices are changing all the time. So, you know, I might not get any, like, I don't know, B vitamins today if I, you know, ate this way, but on another day, because I do change it up, I'm getting a lot then. And I also supplement with all of my vitamins. I'm taking a regular iron tablet. If I don't have red meat, this isn't always a staple. I might have a, a poultry or something else, a fish. So I might not be getting a lot of iron, but I am constantly changing out what I'm having. So that's about it. I will try and get a little snap of my picture tonight or my dinner tonight. And if you guys have any questions about this stuff, please leave me a comment. I have a lot of ideas with foods. I have a lot of cookbooks and a lot of recipes. So if you're wanting some ideas about protein, because I know so many of you guys really struggle with that. Every single recipe is like with the intention of helping somebody that's a competitor to get on stage. In fact, a lot of the recipes that went into my books, especially the contest prep recipe guide, they were developed while I was prepping because I had to get creative. When I've got more flexibility in my off season, I'm not playing around with shirataki noodles, I assure you. I'm eating the real deal, but you know, it's a good alternative just for that um, short period of time when you're trying to get extremely cut. <laughs> so that's enough talking from me guys. Have an awesome day. And I will probably be talking to you from my camera in a second. <laughs> okay, guys. So I know that I had promised you a final meal to kind of take me through to the end of my full day of eating macros. I failed miserably at doing this. Uh, we just had so many things kind of come up that I was like, I can't film everything. So it's taken me about six days to actually film this for you. But I know the last time we had chatted, uh, I didn't have very many calories left. It was probably under 200. So uh, I'd mentioned to you maybe grabbing some ahi tuna or something like that, which could absolutely have been a feasible option. Um, but I just so happened to have prepared tuna fillets from the prep kitchen, which is actually straight out of Dallas. So let's go over and take a quick look at the products and then how I'm going to kind of make that into a meal. So uh, this is the product that I'm talking about right here. Ahi tuna, sashimi grade. There it is. It's got like a light seasoning. I'll pull it out and show you in a bit more detail in a minute. So I'm going to have that um, and that will take me through to the last of my protein almost because I'm going to get a little bit more protein from veggies over there so um to kind of make this like a filling satiating meal i'm not just eating plain tuna on its own uh, i'm going to actually saute a bunch of different veggies so i'll go ahead and do that and then i will show you uh what the macros come out to i guess what i've included the weights um i'll put everything up on the screen for you and uh you can see how it looks Okay, guys, so here is my giant bowl, second serving of the day, to be honest, of <laughs> veggies, but this will pair perfectly with this pre-seared tuna. So this is exactly four ounces. You can see it's got a little bit of a seasoning on top. Honestly, it just tastes like pepper, and I'd have to go and have a look to see exactly what it is, but I will serve these things together. It's going to be pretty tasty and very low calorie. So I've got my tuna, huge bowl of veggies, lots of color. I've got pretty much everything in there except for the kitchen sink. And you'd be amazed at how filling this is, how tasty it is. I actually put some different seasonings on top. So um, there are red chili flakes and Trader Joe's, I think it's a, a garlic free, onion free um, seasoning. So it's kind of like, I think paprika, chili, 
probably jalapenos. It's pretty spicy, um, but this is so good. So I'm gonna enjoy that now. So that takes me to the end of the day, guys. Finally, I did it, yay!